Dudley Daly. Thanks, Kim Corl. I think there's no doubt that people, the length and breadth of this country, are greeting the start of this dull term with a certain amount of horror and fear about what your government intends to unleash in terms of the butchering of their living conditions. But I think it's quite clear also, given your answer to Deputy Adams, that you've no intention of answering these issues in here, and there'll be probably people outside these gates who'll have to force an answer out of you. But seeing as you're not interested in answering questions on domestic policy, we might focus your attention on some issues of foreign policy. And Taoiseach, I wonder, are you aware that yesterday the Peace and Neutrality Alliance uh, launched their findings of a Red Sea opinion poll conducted over the weekend, which revealed that almost 80% of Irish people are in favour of a policy of neutrality. Over 80% do not support a war on Syria without a UN mandate, while 67% are opposed to Ireland or the EU sending arms or military supplies to anti-government groups in Syria. Very clear-cut findings, I think you'll agree. And as a result, 61% of Irish people do not now think that Irish troops should be sent to Syria. Now, at the same time, last week, Ireland was lambasted by the head of the Human Rights of the Council of Europe for colluding in illegal CIA kidnapping and torture of terror suspects and demanding that we investigate the use of Shannon and demanding an end to our violation of human rights and that we would atone for those activities. And yet, despite the views of the Irish people, despite the views of international human rights organisations, your government continues to facilitate and actively assist the warmongering of the US military. I find it a little bit ironic that in the same week as Irish citizens protesting for peace were brought before the courts in Ennis, we had a, a spike in US military activity in Shannon as they ratcheted up the pressure on Syria. Now, I'd like you to comment on the irrefutable evidence produced at that time of armed soldiers on the ground beside those US aircraft. Now, they were either Irish soldiers there offering support services to the US, in which case it was a breach of neutrality, or they were US soldiers not only breaching neutrality, but illegally engaging on Irish soil, because they're only supposed to hear, be here if they're unarmed, and the Tánaiste is always fond of telling us that they are so. How do you know? Because you never investigate. So what I want to hear from you, Taoiseach, is what are you going to do about these unlawful acts? In keeping with the views of the majority of Irish people, can you now confirm that you will not send Irish troops to Syria? And when are you going to behave like the leader of a sovereign nation with an independent foreign policy making its mark on the world stage, or are you happy Thank to you. continue being the governor of the 51st State of the Union? I don't agree with your last assertion, nor do I agree with your first one either. Uh, it's not a case of uh, the government in its preparations for the budget unleashing a wave of fear on, on, uh, on the people of the country. I'm glad, actually, that the... Um, that the calendar from a European perspective has changed and that the budget takes place on the 15th of October. It, it, it leads to a point where you do not have these months of uh, wild allegations and wild speculative comments about what might, 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 might or might not happen uh, in the budget. And I think it's only appropriate uh, that in the, in, the, in the preparation for that budget that it be based on, uh, on, on, on true and exact and detailed financial um, figures which are now um, in the final stages of preparation before presentation to the Minister for Finance. And I can assure you, Deputy Daly and Deputy Adams and the House, that there will be uh, ample opportunity uh, to discuss and debate uh, the questions surrounding the decisions taken by the government in regard to the budget, uh, not only in the chamber here, but also in the, uh, in the relevant uh, committees. Um, I, I, I'm, I have to say that as an Irish, as an Irish person, an Irish citizen, I'm very proud of the part that our country uh, and our troops uh, and our army personnel and our police personnel have played uh, over the very many years uh, in peacekeeping arrangements in various locations around the world, be it from, uh, from the Congo to the Lebanon to Chad uh, to Cyprus uh, and now to the Golan Heights. And the decision has already been made by government um, in respect of sending a contingent of troops to the Golan Heights based on, uh, on the evidence supplied by the Chief of Staff, based on the decision of the Dáil and the Shannad 
and based on the uh, situation internationally. Not the first time that Irish troops uh, have been uh, in service on the Golan Heights and they have um, they've carried out their duties and their responsibilities with great distinction over the years. Uh, this country, as an unaligned country, has continued to play a disproportionate and made a disproportionate impact in many ways around the world. I had first-hand evidence of this myself a number of years ago when, when um, I had the opportunity to travel to Kosovo and see the uh, Irish troops uh, in very difficult situations uh, show uh, equal, um, equal um, courtesy uh, to both sides in very difficult situations and were, um, and were regarded as being exceptional troops um, in, the, um, in, the, in the uniform and carrying the barrier of the, of the United Nations, working with the Finnish troops in those occasions. So it's a, case of, um, it's a case of Ireland continuing to operate to the highest standards in terms of our inter international participation. I'd say to you also, Deputy Daly, that the discussions that took place at the European Council meeting earlier in the year uh, about the situation in Syria, with very divergent views from numbers of, uh, of leaders, uh, were also focused on the, uh, on the range of uh, evidence and information and the disparity uh, uh, of view, indeed, about the um, opposition uh, to the Assad regime um, in Syria uh, and clearly the current situation insofar as the atrocities carried out uh, where so many lost their lives with the uh, use of chemical weapons speaks for itself. Thank you. Uh, clearly the, the agreement reached between, uh, between the various international countries including the US um, and uh, Russia uh, has uh, brought about a situation of examination of exactly what happened here. Daily. Well, I have to hand it to you. You've demonstrated by your answer that you have no more interest in being the leader of a sovereign nation than I thought that you had. You patently failed to address any of the issues I raised with you, namely the illegal use of Shannon Airport by the US military, concrete evidence that what is existing there is not what the Taunashta has told us on repeated occasions. Many Irish people are proud of our troops. I'm proud of them myself. My own father was in the Congo. I come from an army family, but that is different than sending troops into the illegally occupied Golan Heights. You go on about the appalling Assad regime. All of us could agree with that. But the idea of facilitating the United States, the biggest users of chemical weapons on the globe, those who turned a blind eye on Iraq when they uh, used chemical weapons about the Iranians, how could the US say anything about that when they gave them the very coordinates to unleash the chemical weapons? Agent Orange in Vietnam, the use of white phosphorus by the Israelis in Gaza. If you were the leader of a neutral country, you should see the opportunity now of putting chemical weapons beyond use in Syria as a good thing, but not just in Syria. Why don't we take them out in the Middle East, including Israel itself at the heart of it? Why wouldn't you, given that we fought to be on the Human Rights Council as an independent nation, take that role seriously and stop being a lapdog to the US authorities? Well, I've pointed out to you the uh, exceptional competence and professionalism of Irish troops over the years, and I'm glad you share that view. It's slightly different from what you said in the beginning. We have a very clear view here, uh, and have stated it on more than one occasion, uh, of our complete uh, and utter abhorrence and, uh, and um, uh, opposition uh, to rendition flights. And because we have uh, very close relations with the United States over very many years, um, we uh, are assured and can be happy that there are no rendition flights going through uh, Shannon. Now, if you've got evidence to the contrary, well then, produce it. Um, but from, from the point of view, we've, Shannon Airport has been used uh, for very many years for flights uh, in transit through to various locations in the world, uh, including by, obviously, American military, but not as, um, as um, uh, passengers or travellers uh, on rendition flights, which was a an issue that was raised very seriously on a number of occasions here. That completes Leader's question.